Hello, everyone. I'm Yu Zheng from Tsinghua University. It's my great honor to present our work, Disentangling User Interest and Conformity for Recommendation with Causal Embedding. First, I will introduce the background of this paper. In rack manner systems, what we observe are user item interactions. However, there are causes behind each interaction. For example, here is a bicycle in e-commerce recommendation, and it is a bestseller. A sports lover may buy the bicycle because of his unique taste on certain characteristics, while an office staff also buys this bicycle simply because of its high sales. The two users buy the same bicycle with different causes, and in this paper, we focus on the two main causes, interest and conformity. The goal of this paper is to learn disentangled representations for interest and conformity. The motivation for learning disentangled representations is to accomplish causal recommendation under non-ID situations. This is an example from computer vision, and suppose the task is to predict the shape of each object. Intuitively, models should predict the shape by capturing the outline of each object. However, if we only look at the training data, we can find that models can also predict the shape from the color or the size of each object. If test data is IID with training data, then we cannot distinguish between good models and bad models. In this example, training data and test data are not IID. Then only those models that learn disentangled representations for outline, size, and color can survive under test data. In terms of rack manner systems, there are two main advantages for learning disentangled representations. The first one is robustness. Since rack manners are trained and updated in real time as the users interact with the system, so training data and test data are not ID for rack manner systems, and learning disentangled representations could improve the robustness under this non-ID situation. The second advantage is interpretability. With disentangled representations, we can give explanations for each recommended item, and this could improve user friendliness and facilitate algorithm developing. Now I will introduce a few existing methods for causal recommendation. The first one is inverse propensity scoring, or IPS. In this method, each sample is reweighted by a propensity score, and this propensity score is usually estimated from item popularity. The intuition behind this method is to impose lower weights on popular items and boost unpopular items. However, in this method, interest and popularity are bundled as one unified representations, which means that the two factors are entangled. The second method is causal embedding, and this method performs two matrix factorization tasks on large bias data set and small unbiased data set. A L1 or L2 regularization term is also imposed on the two tasks. However, the representations learned in this method are still entangled. There are several challenges of disentangling interest and conformity. The first challenge is the variety of conformity, which means that conformity depends on both users and items. For example, users tend to conform more when they are not familiar with the item. The second challenge is that learning disentangled representations is intrinsically hard, since we only have observational data and there is no ground truth for user interest. The last challenge is that how each interaction is resulted from the two factors is very complicated, and careful designs are needed for combining the two factors to make the final recommendations. 
Now I will introduce our proposed disentangling interest and conformity with causal embedding, shortened as DICE. To tackle the first challenge of the variety of conformity, we propose to adopt separate embeddings of interest and conformity for both users and items. Embedding proximity in high-dimensional space can express the variety of conformity, which address the first challenge. Meanwhile, interest and conformity are independently modeled by separate embeddings. In order to learn disentangled representations for interest and conformity, we propose to utilize the colliding effect from causal inference to obtain cost-specific data. The intuition behind our proposal is to train interest or conformity embeddings with interactions that are caused by the corresponding factor. To aggregate the two factors for the final recommendation, we leverage multitask curriculum learning to combine the two causes. Here is the overview of our proposed DICE model. Now I will elaborate on our model design. We first propose a causal graph and a structure causal model to describe that interest and conformity are two independent causes of a clique. To implement the causal graph and the structure causal model, we propose to use separate embeddings for interest and conformity. So for each user and each item, there will be two embeddings, one interest embedding and one conformity embedding and we use inner product to compute the matching score. And finally, clique is predicted by combining the two causes. In order to obtain cost-specific data, we propose to utilize tools from causal inference. Here I will briefly introduce some basic information. The three nodes here, A, B, and C, forms a structure called immorality, and C is the collider of A and B. The collider, in fact, tells us that A and B are independent. However, after we condition on C, A and B are not independent anymore. Here is an example from daily life. Suppose C is whether a student passes an exam, and A is whether a student is talented, B is whether a student is hardworking. And the talent and hard working are generally independent. However, if we condition on the student's performance on the exam, the two factors are not independent. For example, we know Bob passes the exam and Bob is not talented. Then he is hard working with high probability. Similarly, Alice doesn't pass the exam and Alice is talented then we know she is most likely not hardworking. Now return to our case. We can find that clique is the collider of interest and conformity. From the colliding effect, we know that a clique item with low popularity indicates users high interest, and an unclicked item with high popularity indicates users low interest. Specifically, we use MI and MC to denote the interest and conformity matching probability matrix. There are two cases. The first case is that a user U clicks a popular item A and doesn't click an unpopular item B. In this case, the click could come from user's conformity, so we are not sure whether user's interest in A is larger than B. The second case is that the user U clicks an unpopular item C and doesn't click a popular item D. In this case, the colliding effect comes to help, and we have one more inequality on user's interest. Based on this analysis, we can divide the whole training set into two subsets where O1 contains the data that negative examples are more popular than positive examples, and O2 contains the opposite cases. With O1 and O2, we propose to train different embeddings with different cost-specific data. 
The main task is to estimate cliques, and we can use data from both O1 and O2. Specifically, we concatenate the interest embedding and the conformity embedding and use BPR to optimize those embeddings. For interest modeling, we only use interest embeddings and data in O2 could be utilized. BPR loss is adopted to optimize interest embeddings. For conformity modeling, we only use conformity embeddings. Data from both O1 and O2 can be utilized, and BPR is also adopted to optimize conformity embeddings. We also add an extra discrepancy task to impose direct supervision on embedding disentanglement. Specifically, we propose three options, which are L1inf, L2inf, and distance correlation. The four tasks are combined with two hyperparameters, alpha and beta. We propose popularity-based negative sampling with margin, shortened as P and SM. Suppose the popularity of the positive item is P, then we will sample negative items with popularity either larger than P plus M or lower than P minus M. With large M, we have high confidence on the inequalities from the cladding effect, so the task is uh, easier for the model. And with small m, we have low confidence on those inequalities, so the task is much harder. We adopt an easy-to-hard strategy to train the DICE model. We conduct experiments on two large-scale datasets, MovieLens 10M and Netflix, and here shows the basic statistics of the two datasets. We use the same evaluation protocol with cos E, where training data and test data are not IID. We use several widely adopted metrics, including recall, hit ratio, and NDCG. And two state-of-the-art base models are used, which are MF and Light GCN. We aim to answer these three research questions. Here is the overall performance of all methods on two datasets. And we have some observations. The first one is our proposed DICE framework outperforms baselines with significant improvements with respect to all metrics on both datasets. The second observation is that DICE is a highly general framework which can be combined with various recommendation models. With respect to interpretability, we visualize the learned item embeddings of DICE on the two datasets. Specifically, we divide all the items into three groups, which are popular, normal, and unpopular, and we plot items of different groups with different colors. We can find that conformity embeddings of items with different popularity form layers, while interest embeddings of items with different popularity are uniformly distributed in a space. In other words, conformity embeddings largely captures conformity, and interest embeddings squeeze out conformity. For robustness, we evaluate the performance on test data with different strands of intervention, and we can observe that DICE is more robust than IBS-based method under different levels of intervention. To summarize, we propose to learn disentangled representations of user interest and conformity for recommendation with tools of causal inference. A general framework DICE is developed which shows great robustness and interpretability under non-IED situations. In the future, we plan to extend DICE to incorporate more features and learn disentangled representations for finer-grained user interest. Codes can be found at this link. Thanks for listening, and here are some contact information of our lab.